service. So, our evening message at the Will Clayton Church of Christ 2019, January the 6th is, How much is too much for Christ in 2019? How much is too much for Christ in 2019? Now, we see that uh, in the book where our brother read faithfully from 1 Kings uh, chapter 12. We're going to go down and deal with a few verses of this uh, text. Uh, and we see beginning at verse 19 is that for all these years, uh, many, many years, uh, years before Egypt, 400 years in Egypt and up to 1 Kings chapter 12, the Israelites have always had a certain system of worship. Joshua had forewarned them before they crossed over to the water. Gave them good heed to warning that you cannot serve him on the other side. He didn't have confidence in them. He said he will kill you and your families. He will not forgive you of your sins. And they said, no, how can we do it after he's brought us here this far? So Joshua gave them instructions again and they went over. And they did keep their word uh, as they sinned. They brought forth sacrifice. And that first group went over, kept their word to, Josh, to God and Joshua. But their children came behind them, uh, uh, defected, and went to the other side of belief. But nevertheless, we thank God we have a good example of them keeping their word. But now Jeroboam rises up. And the sad part about this fellow is God wants to be with him like he wants to be with us. But he does not want to put the effort forward. He has actually looked at what it will cost and he's saying it's too much of a risk. They're going to go back because they got to go there three times a year in addition to other trips they might make. They're going to fall in love with Jeroboam. I mean real bomb and they're going to kill me. Now that's he thought of that. He didn't, he didn't ask the prophet to go talk to God about it. He already knew. Why go talk to God about it? I mean God already told me his side of the story. He believes uh, that he's the one. You know, go see Brother Jeff. God bless you, Brother Jeff. God bless you. And we see 1 Kings uh, chapter 12 and verse not beginning at uh, 19. Uh, we see that. So Israel rebelled against the house of David until this day. And so when this is written, this is an ongoing battle, an ongoing thing, and it's again, David is gone, but this is the house of David, and so there's a constant battle uh, evermore on this wise. So verse 20, came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and four score thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So he thinks, okay, we got to go and fight. Uh, we're going to go and get things back together again. And uh, But the word of God came unto Shimeon, the son of the man of God saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. Then they hearkened therefore to the word of the Lord, and returned to depart, saying, according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam beat Shechem, built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said, this all. Now, he says, this is one of the things we have to stop. This one thing we want to talk about, saints. How much is too much for Christ in 2019? First, talk about three areas. One belief, one obedience, and one faithfulness. He automatically falls into trouble with belief. Listen, Jesus told us, in the book of John chapter 6. They asked him, show us the work that we may do the work. He said it's to believe on him that God sent. People don't realize, and this is what really makes me sad. In the church, we're supposed to know this. Belief is a work. To believe is the work you give him. You must first believe. Jeroboam proves he doesn't believe. The prophet went through an elaborate thing. Takes the clothes. Tans it ten times. Give him ten pieces. Let's him know God's going to be with him. Now if you follow him as you're supposed to. As David followed him. 
you're going to be okay. And he does not believe that. So he says in his heart, Thou shall the kingdom return to the house of David. Now you have to stop. I remember I was talking to Henry one day and I said, Man, what if this happened? The other thing. And he said, What? What's going to happen? I said, Well, you know, he said, he said What? I said, You're right, brother. Nothing's going to happen. He said, Yeah. Till God says something happens, it's not going to happen. So we need to understand that God didn't speak here. This is him. Verse 27. If this people go to do sacrifice, this is his thesis, to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Now that's what he thought. Now he doesn't stop for a minute and think. Rehoboam already wanted to kill him and had his army put together. And God said, don't do it. Don't fight your brethren. That's the only thing that stopped them. So he doesn't realize and understand. They were all ready to get you. And this is what's wrong with us. God's already stopped your enemies. Don't go think in your mind. I see logic says. If they got to go there three times a year. And I'm falling in love with him. You don't see him waving at everybody. He going to be at church. I'm going to have to go to church. It's on his territory. And they're going to love him. He's in the city of David. Where the house of the Lord is. I'm way up here in the boondock. They going to want to kill me. That's foolishness. That means you lose on the first point. Belief. God cannot and will not be with you. Nor me. And so therefore he says. 28 verse. So he starts to do what? He starts his trek of disobedience. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two cows of gold. And said unto them. It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel. Which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. That's why we say how much is too much. He's saying he already knows. It's obvious he's heard the complaint growing up. Man it sure is not a trouble for us to go way from Dan. All the way to Jerusalem. Three times a year. But yeah, everybody go, man, but we the fathers, man. We gotta go away. We already got our own up there. It's been up there. I don't know why we just can't do our thing now to be the same thing to the same God. You same God everywhere. No, it's too much. So you already know I got him. Now, if you didn't know about Bethel, it's approximately 10 miles from Jerusalem. So you can have travel all the way down. By the time you get to Bethel, they say, man, you know, you can go to church right here. Really? Because, you know, you don't travel far. It's another 10 miles. 10 more miles is real. And you can stop right here. We, look, man, it's the same God. Same God everywhere. We got this image of him because he's pure as gold. And he is strong like a bull. Now, listen. Now, I'm going to show y'all something. You may think this is so far-fetched. Well, man, how could they do this? It's easy, brethren. This is not the first time that they have had metal-made animals affiliated allowed and introduced to them by Jehovah God himself. It's easy to slide. I remember looking at this years ago. I said, well, why would they slide? How could they make that move? Because we've seen metal animals before. Approved of by God. Not Aaron. Although the story of Aaron is still there. Making a gold calf. Making a day. But they know where they got destroyed because of that. We're talking about or prove animals. Let's get some Bible to prove. Okay, now let's look at Numbers 21. See, a lot of times we wonder, why can they do this? Because confusion sets in. People begin to say, well, man, we did this back then. How could this be any worse? What's wrong with doing it now? Look at Numbers 21 and verse 5. See, this will explain to you and I why people teach 10%. Because it's too much to teach the right way. It takes too long for the money to accumulate. Amen. It takes too long to get the things I want as the pastor slash evangelist slash king of the church. I'm just being real with you. It takes too long to build my kingdom, my glory, my honor of an edifice second to none. Can't get it it takes too long on what y'all done. Look at Numbers 21 5. And the people spake against Moses, against forgive me, against God first, and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. Our soul loathed this light bread. Talking about the man from heaven. I want to stop for a minute and point something out. Just because you think something came from heaven, you think people are going to like the way it tastes? They are familiar with the flavors. Light wafer. They've eaten other foods that had light wafer. They're familiar, very familiar with honey. 
They're told where they're going is the land of milk and honey. But it's coming out of heaven. They see it fall. They know that there's no such thing as an airplane. There's definitely no such thing as aliens. So they just see a man, it's bread coming out. It's not rain. It's bread. Just because something come out of heaven and it's light and it's sweet does not mean people are going to like it. So, brother, there's no sense in you creating something on earth that's light and sweet, thinking that's going to bring them close to the Lord. This is out of heaven. They see that. Mm. You could have made bread just like this of the earth, and it is no more going to bring them to God than what they don't like it. And so he says, verse 6, And the Lord sent, now he does this, fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of Israel died. And it, see, this is the mentality of a burn. This is just like no little snake bite to the whole. Some bit me. It, it, like it caused you excruciating on your way out pain. Hey, everybody knew about it. You can't hide. Because the snakes have been sent by God. They're going to seek you out. So in verse 7, therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. For we are spoken against the Lord and against thee. So the confession is good. Prayer to the Lord. Proper response. That he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses. Make thee a fiery serpent. And set it upon a pole. And it should come to pass. That everyone that is bitten. As you ought to wait till you get bit. Because death is impending after this bite. When he look at the pointed. Shall live. You don't have to look at it. If you didn't get bit. See if you got bit. Then you got so to wait till you get bit to look at it. You're looking. At this snake. Watch what it's made out of. Verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass. That is an animal. Now he didn't say worship it. But he said you got to look at it. You got to look at it. So you got to have belief. So this is a second point. Belief plus obedience. And he says. And put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had been any man. When he beheld the serpent of brass. He lived. Now see. Now this now makes Jeroboam start a little easy to accept. Because people can tell this story. Listen, I think Jeroboam got a point. Because see, when they were in the wilderness, they looked at the brazen serpent. And they lived after they got bit by the fiery serpent. And what did God do with Moses' staff? The first thing God showed him. Turned it into a serpent. Now that's Bible. Can you imagine somebody getting excited? Jeroboam is right. God bless him. He's our leader. See how easy it is. See, so say before you go gut punching these saints, it's this an easy sale. Let me show you how powerful it is. Look at 2 Kings 18. Just hold your finger down. Chapter 12 of 1 Kings. 2 Kings 18. This thing is going to be resurrected again. To mean something to others. So this isn't the first time that saints have seen brazen or golden animals incorporated in the honoring of God as far as an obedience to do something to it. This group now takes it to the next level which is forbidden. And you look and say why would they be doing it? Because they have it since their forefathers gave it to them. It's made by the hands of Moses, not crooked Aaron with earrings smelted, making a golden cap. So God told Moses, make it must be holy. So look what they do. So now we see in uh, 2 Kings 18, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Verse 2. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. I love the Bible. So what do we learn from all these nights? God knows the exactness. He knows who Jeff Mama is. He knows who uh, 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 Robert, my mother's name was. He knows our father's name, whether we knew him or not. He knows who they are. Who they were when they existed. And what their outcome is in life. And he's showing by naming all the... If he doesn't keep his record, nobody's going to remember. We're going to remember that. By the time it's written, people being being forgot. What was her name again? Zuba? No, it wasn't that. Old folks sitting around there. That wasn't her name. Can't remember. God remembers. Verse 3. 
And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David his father did. Verse 4. He removed the high place which is worshiping God right in the wrong place. Can't do that one. Break down the images. Worshiping God incorrectly with the wrong image. And cut down the groves. Worshiping God with a false representation of what the Lord is. And breaking pieces. Look what's popped up on the scene. The brazen serpent that Moses had made. You may say, well, man, you know David did it. Stay. It was no reason to get rid of it. David wasn't allowed them to be worshiping. It's just something that it can remind you. Hold to the children. You see this? This is what Moses made when the serpents were biting your forefathers. Kill them. And they looked at it. And it caused them to live. See, it's, it's easy to come up with Jeroboam's plan. It's not the first time images of animals have been incorporated in the obedience of God. And so he says here, not the worship of the animal, but the obedience of God. And he says, for unto those days, watch this, watch this, watch this, breaking preachers, the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. What? And he called it Neshushten. Can you believe that? But Hezekiah said, no, nah, we're going to chop this thing up. Because he's obviously got wind. Y'all been doing what? Burning incense? Y'all crazy? They weren't told to burn no incense. They were told to look at it, man. Bring the thing to me. We finna bust it up. We know this is not going to happen no more. So that's what he did on verse 5. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel. So that after him was none like unto him among all the kings of Judah. Now watch this. Now here's something you really need to look at. Nor any that were before him. Now you see this? I want to share something with you, saints. Hezekiah is one of the greatest kings ever. Right there with David. It says, there's no king before him that eclipsed him. None out. See, sometimes we like to have our go-to God. That David is everything. David is one of the great kings. Hezekiah is too. See, we try to make it that God don't have no other good people. And you know what that translates? After a while, you start thinking you know good. Man, I wish I could preach like brother so and so. You don't have to preach like that. Man, I wish I could talk like sister so and so. You don't have to talk like her. Just live right. That's not the last holy person made. That's not the last holy person on the earth. We need to understand this is a great king. Now when it says before and after, that sums it up. We have to understand. So here's a cause, great man. This is what it takes to rise up. Investigate and find out y'all been burning it. Incense, y'all done lost y'all mind. We give me that thing. We finna tear it up. But watch this. This isn't the only time. In the temple of Almighty God, affiliated with the temple, there are animals made of metal affiliated with an instrument that the priests have to use. Oh yeah. Look at 2 Kings 16. He say, well, Ozan, what are your point? I'm going to show you. And when you see the point, you'll go, okay, I got it. 2 Kings 16. And if you will, let us look uh, at, uh, let me see. 2 Kings 16. I want to get a little few verses maybe before it. So you know exactly uh, what we're talking about. Uh, look at, if you will, uh, Verse 16, thus did Uriah the priest according to all that King Ahaz commanded. So you've got this man giving instructions to the priest on what needs to be done. But what is the instruction he gives? Verse 15, King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying upon the great altar, burn the morning burnt offerings and the evening meat offerings and the king's burnt offerings and his meat offerings with the burnt offerings of all the people of the land and their meat offerings and their drink offerings and sprinkling upon all the blood of the burnt offerings and all the blood of sacrifice until the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire. Now watch what he said. And the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. Now watch what happens. Ahaz has gotten off track. 
He's gotten off track. And he's giving instructions to Uriah, the priest. Go up to verse 10. This is how you can slide off track, man. That's what the message is about. How much is too much? What will you say? Man, I would do that. That's too much. 2019. Two sermons on Sunday? That's too much. That's too much Jesus on Sunday. You don't need that much Jesus. Two services? And Wednesday too? Three per week? Is it really, um, is it really necessary? See, because your mind begins to gravitate into a fudge mentality where you can kind of just float around. But what you understand is, as we talked about, the Roman letter says, how can you hear without a teacher? It's a purpose for a gathering to be taught. It's for you to be fortified. And you go out and you have more to wrestle with. This is what you need. And that's why it's done. It isn't done to promote numbers, to make it some type of a, a fan club, to hang out with each other. It is a design to study by. It's a study too. And if you can sacrifice in 2019, I'd like to see all of us make a commitment in 2019. To say, now I know there's a lot of people out here tonight, but there he is, free online. Thanks, brother. Free as brother, keep coming up with the plan. Is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead on and come to service more than I did last year, and I'm gonna see if that's a change. Well, that won't help you, so you might as well keep doing what you're doing because that attitude is shot. <laughs> but if you say, I'm going to come so I can glean, and I know there's going to be a change. I want to talk to you at the end of the year and you say, Oh, Zan, I did it right. I said I prayed and there was no change. I'm not going to have one person come up. Because it's impossible to happen. Amen. It's like I'm going to eat more and lift weights. And my muscle, I'm going to see if they're going to get big. Oh, they will. Amen. You, they will. Because your body is designed that way. Mm -hmm. You're going to trim down. You're going to shave off. And you're going to build up. You're gonna, you, you won't lose a lot of weight. A lot of people don't lose. But you put on muscle mass. They say, well, that's just bad. No, it is because muscle mass makes your legs stand up long at work all day. Versus go, oh, my leg's tired. Meat just on your leg with no muscle. That's when you go, I'm not leg tired. Muscle mass brings weight. It brings strength. What's the difference, saints? That's why people get to see, I have lost but three pounds. Yeah, but did you add 10 pounds of muscle? You tough now. Your endurance is greater. Your strength, your back is straighter. Because you have muscles now in areas where you didn't. Brothers, brothers and all y'all lift weights. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now, let's look at this again. He says, and so therefore, in verse 10, he says, first, uh, 2 Kings 16, 10. And King, we almost done. King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, the king of Assyria. Now watch this. And saw an altar. That was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah, the priest, the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it, according to all workmanship thereof. And Uriah, the priest, built an altar according to all the King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah, the priest, made it against King Ahaz, came from Damascus. That's so silly. He went down there and whooped them, but he saw that pretty altar. And he saw the stuff in their pockets. That he took and he said, they got more stuff than us. Their God must give them stuff while ours keeps us broke. So we're going to make an altar to their God. Make sacrifice. That's what he's telling them in verse uh, uh, 15. He's telling them, make sacrifice, bring the offering. But watch what he says. Verse, drop down to verse 15. He says, but the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire thereby. Abide. So he said, because he know. I might get in a bind and need the Lord, so I'm going to call on him from the brazen altar. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Look at verse 17. I say, you Roger, being lame spiritually, it does exactly what Ahaz tells him. Look at verse 17. And King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases and removed the laver from off them. Watch this. And took down the sea from off the brazen oxen. Did y'all see the word oxen? See, when it was made, you go back and you read, that was a thing made like a sea. And they had brazen oxen on it. Little oxen 
made of brass. Israel was always used to seeing animals, brass, affiliated with God. This is right down the brazen and all. It's right there. They see it. Little cows stand like that, made of brass. So you say, well, what's the big deal? Because it's easy for Jeroboam to slide in to gold calves. It's not like we ain't never had no animals affiliated with this worship. We don't worship them, but they always been around us. It makes it so easy to slide in. Now watch what he says. That were under it and put it upon the pavement of stones. Okay, so this guy has lost it. But he knows this thing may be so important. One of the things, faithfulness, the last point I'm going to bring up, faithfulness. We talked about belief, obedience, and faithfulness. See, the thing that gets the saint is he has to understand at some point he's on a marathon. I know Keith was a great track star. I don't know about any of you others. I know I was not as slow as an elephant, but, you know, I did what I could. But when you run in track, when they tell you you want to be a long distance runner, you need to think because, man, that stuff is rough. That's them kids you see in the morning around your house. You know it's a school running out there on the sidewalk when it's dark. You say, what are all these kids running around, man? That's the long distance people. They're running. They take them all through the neighborhood. They don't run no two or three miles. Man, police, that's a warm up. The race of Christianity is a marathon. It's like the marathon, 25, 26 miles. And you're running. It's rough. Legs feeling like jello and you still just halfway done. Your endurance is what it takes. Faithfulness. What has happened to Ahaz is he's run out of faithfulness. He cannot wait for God to bless. He just can't. So I'm going to build this old fake makeshift altar that I can come up with. And then we're going to get our stuff quick on this. And if it get tough and my endurance gets low, I'll run to God on the side. Are you living like that? Have you gone to tithes and offerings? Have you listened to the Richard Barclays and the Worthless Haywoods? Tides and off, and if you've done that, and you want your stuff from, but when it get tough, you go to the knees of the saint. Oh God of heaven and earth, please look down upon me, a soldier, and put your face all on the carpet. Help me, oh Lord, for I'm in dire straits. Why don't you say, Lord, remember thou my tithing? No, because you know, see, that's a new altar. That's the one from, from Tigger Palesa. No, that don't work. I got to go to the brazen. No, 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 no. Faithfulness. Listen, he told Jeremiah, let them tell their dreams. He said, I didn't sell them. He said, and let everybody know I'm going to bless the one who teaches my word faithfully. And good times and bad. You rise up. You look at the pages. This is the page. And this is what it says. And you move forward. As Brother Hamilton taught excellently today. You don't look at whether you're healthy. You don't look at whether you're strong. You don't look at if your pockets are full. You don't look at what you're wearing. Where you live. Who's with you. You look toward Christ. And you say what the Bible say. And then one day you're going to look. Toward Christ, and, and the Lord will say, It's enough, come on home, you're done. Come on in. Just like soldiers. Just like soldiers. Fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. One day it's okay, man, it's gonna be my last day. I hope I don't get shot. And then when he goes back, give everybody a hug, he flies off the helicopter and waves to his crew goodbye. Shed a few tears. He's sad because he leaving getting shot up. Yeah, because he loves them, but he also got a family at home. So he can get back to the real world where all that nonsense isn't done. You have to understand, it's time to go. So faithfulness is critical. So let's go back and finish up Jeroboam and then we're done, saints. We're done. Because we got to get this nailed down, this poor soul. First Kings 12. We've understood belief, obedience, and staying faithful. But we got to finish up old Jeroboam. Wrap him up in a package. Toss him to the side. 1 Kings chapter 12, and we left right off, we wanted to stress to you the importance of understanding. Yes, we give, 
Yes, the Old Testament is far learned. Romans 15. None of us are beside those scriptures, nor do we fail to know the knowledge of those scriptures. But what we don't do is use their precise example of giving numerically. We use their example of faithfulness in every time they went three times a year, they gave 10% of all their possessions. Now, that's what you teach. But you don't teach to give 10%. You look at the brazen serpent, don't burn incense and worship it. You look at the sea with the little oxen on it, but you don't pray to them. But if you look on that, see, they've been cut off, man, who cut the oxen off? He used to be oxen, who did that? What'd you do, Ahab? What did you cut the land? What, what's wrong with you, man? You're not supposed to alter that because it's supposed to be like it was in the beginning. But you don't look at it to work. They understood that. They knew that. The problem is you and I must understand. We must know, brother, you go all too far on this one. Mm -mm. So we need elders and deacons and evangelists. We need to ordain them. But you're still not the head. All y'all together still not the head. Christ is the head. And if you don't have, you still not the head by yourself. Amen. Christ is still there. So you're getting them to work the people in service, not to be their God, because only one can be our God. That's what we got to understand. But when you see it, it's easy to slide in the wrong direction. Because God is secure in his teaching, and he has something to keep you from being a piece of paper in the wind. You know, if a paper rolls in the wind, and it hits a post, you know, it'll stay massed up against that post. And if it blows the other way, that's another post, and it just sticks. That's us. That's you and me. Whoa, it got all that. Thank God one of the elders caught him over here. Oh, it was one of the deacons grabbed him over here. See, that's and you can stay within the confine. Somebody can come and grab you and lift you up, put you where you're supposed to be. That's what that's for. Not to worship. We come to the worship service. Yeah, we want to come to all the services. But we cannot go to person. You did not come to night service. Hell will be your house. No, you can't do it like that. See? See, you can't. See, it is to teach more, but it is not to condemn the soul to hell. If the person can't make it. He's been there six years. He works on Wednesday. He's never come to a Bible study. Surely he'll taste hell. No. No. It is to help, not to condemn to hell. So you have to understand it has to be remain in the right position so it doesn't slide into golden calves. Now look, I'm going to wrap this up and we're done. Uh, Look at, if you will, 1 Kings 12. And we'll start where we right where we left off. And the rest is encouragement, reading for you and for I. So we leave at the part of the too much to carry on to go away. Here's your God, verse 29, 1 Kings 12, 29. And he set the one in Bethlehem and the other put in Dan. And this thing, watch this, verse 30 is beautiful, became a sin. See, this action which they had never saw done. The Lord says, okay, this is a sin. He judges, he looks, that's a sin. You can't do that. For the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people. Why is that? Because I have to be the Levites. Listen. God has said, look, I want to lift the Levites up. And I'm going to give them special strength to be ministers between me and the people. They don't get no land. They got somewhere to live. They don't get no inheritance. Because they have inherited me. He says, so I'm going to bless them. So what does Jacob do? He blesses Levi. Well, you say, let's get somebody else from Dan. Time up. They're not blessed. They're not selected. God's not going to be with them. It don't matter. The God that's golden on my end, he says it's good. See, you're from God. What's the, we shouldn't even have golden cow. Is there not brazen oxen? Did not Moses make a brazen serpent and the people were healed? What you got against animals? A good man regarded this beef. Well, you know, can you hear that cat just coming out of scriptures? So like, boy, that boy can preach. Boy, that boy's a liar. Amen. Listen. <clears throat> Verse 32. And Jeroboam, my day, they feast. He makes his own day, eight month of the 15th day of the month. Like unto the feast that is in Judah. Just like Judah's. What y'all gonna do about the feast? We got a feast day too. And the, we go to church on Saturday. Hold up. It's Sunday. 
The Bible says, yeah, the Bible says a lot of things, but that's the law. You just got them saying we shouldn't make brazen. Yeah, but because that's still today. It's still a court, but we don't do that ceremony part of Father that day. It was to show a day of rest. We know the day of rest now is when we go to heaven. We understand that we rest from our labor. When we go to paradise, we rest from our labor. Oh, man, you just switch and use some of the Old Testament, some of the New. Okay, well, look, we can't help you. We have an instruction upon the first day of the week, Acts 27. First Corinthians 16, 1 2, upon the first day. See, that's far as we can go with that person. Amen. He offered upon the altar, he said. So did he in Bethel. Isn't that amazing? Now, you know what's amazing here? You got to love a guy like Jeroboam, right? What would be the report? He loved his people. See, Jeroboam, he not stuck down on one city like y'all. He goes all over to love the people serving God. Isn't that amazing? He was in Bethel. Isn't that amazing? What that sound like people think? Now, my pastor came to my house. What does that mean? He did not bring truth. Amen. Listen. So did he in Bethel sacrifice upon the cows that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel. The 15th day of the 8th month, even in the month which he had devised where? In his own heart. And ordained a feast of the children of Israel. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now this is a real sweet deal here. We're right on time. This is sweet, y'all. Look what it says. He ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. Did y'all catch that? You know what I've been saying to God? I'm going to give y'all, y'all gave too. Because I love y'all. I love y'all. Amen. How can you not love a guy like this? He gave us a feast. See, he cares. Y'all see that? And he offered upon the altar and burned incense. I'm going to give y'all, y'all day. Are you not the children of God? You deserve a day. There's no day like that in the law. Until the children of Israel. It's always been unto God. A feast unto God. He switched because uh, I know they tired of doing too much and they tired of doing everything for him. Mm. It's time that they get some love. Mm -hmm. It's other people holy. It just can't be the Levite. It's time that they get to be a priest. And if you read in other areas, he eventually makes himself a priest. Yeah, he eventually makes himself a priest. Mm -hmm. See, so who would deny him? He chose us and we're not Levites. He can't be a priest. He's a good guy. He loves us. See, that's the problem. You can't love the saints more than God. Amen. You can't do nothing for the saints that God won't tell you to do. You've got to keep us clean before the Lord. That's what you got to do for us. So that's the end of my message. Hope it can give you some encouragement. What will you choose? It's too much. For you to do for Jesus this year, 2019. When you get to that point, now we're not saying doing things beyond what's written. Everybody gets tired. We know that we've covered those bases. Some things come up and you say, well, man, I'm going to only make one service. I've got to do this. Everybody understand. But what will you do in your mind to say, this is too much? This is too much. You know? I want to go invite that brother to church. He don't never come anyway, so. It's too much to keep calling him. Call him again. He don't even answer the phone. You know how you get somebody who answer the phone, call from a different number. That's all you got to do. Amen. It's an easy kill. It's, and don't leave a message. Call him again. Hey, and that's the, who's that young man? Hello? I remember my God brother like that. I'm not going to call his name. He don't go here no more. But call him. He said, hello. I said, hey. I said, brother, I got to call you from a different number to get you the answer. He bust out laughing. He said, you got me, Jose. He said, you got me. <laughs> I love him to this day. He told the same thing. He said, brother, just kept pestering me. And I know y'all have done it too. Keep coming. He kept pestering me and he come from a different number and he got me. But he knew, I know you did it because you love him. I said, yeah, brother, we hadn't seen you, man. Go to church somewhere. Place your membership somewhere. Just go to work. But, you know, you can't hide out at your house. You can't. You got to come to the Lord's house. So if you believe that and understand, is that too much for you to call? Just switch it up. Change the number. Get someone else. Hey, make your phone right quick. Someone you trust. Them, just call. You know, you'd be surprised I'd pop up, you know. And that's because you love them. How much is too much? Is it really too much for you to help out with a Bible class? 
I mean, just think about how people want to buy. There's so much to teach children, little children, middle-sized children, teenagers, adults. You know what I mean? Is it too much saying, you know, like, well, you know, I don't know. You don't have to be Jesus to teach a Bible class. You don't have to be Jesus. We got the material we handed to you. We're walking through training. They got the materials, you know. You, you tell them about Jesus. If they little, give them something to call them. And tell them. They say, what do you think about that? Say, so that Jesus is a woman, right? No, he's a man. Okay, you teaching. You teaching. That's it. You know, is that too much? I don't know. I don't work well with children. Then you will. See, you will because once you get to work, you're going to have to peel them off. You know what they're going to do? I remember people to this day that taught my daughter and people that have taught my son. Some of them are dead. I remember them to this day. I remember my daughter saying, sometimes it was only us in the class. We had another congregation. And she would just teach and teach and ask me questions. A sister's dead now, but my daughter said, I remember her. I'm thankful for that sister who went into that room by herself, sometimes with just her and my daughter, telling them about Jesus. That's why she's still faithful to this day. You can do the same. Whatever you want to do. Whatever work you want to do. You say, I want to get into Bible class teaching, but I'm not well polished. We can polish you up like a diamond. That's some of the best teachers in the brotherhood here. Not just me. Brothers. If you're a sister, I've never taught ladies Bible class, then start. Say, but I'm, I'm not a person of age. You don't have to be. You don't have to wait till you get old and bent over to teach. Amen. Do you love Jesus? Tell the sisters why you love him. What he has done for you. And that's all you need to do. If you're not a member of the church. Recognize. Is it too much for you to get baptized again in Acts 19, 1 through 5? It wasn't too much for them. They heard the message and they decided, well, we're not worshiping false God, but we're still not worshiping God, right? And they were baptized again. Why? Because you hear Jesus died and buried on the third day he rose again. You believe that with all your heart. So my strength, the Lord will lift you up in baptism. What process happens in baptism? Sins are removed. You get Christ's image in you. The name means image. Character, you begin to be able to act like him. Authority, you begin to be able to tell people about the law with authority. Well, now they're rebuked down. They must do that. You get everlasting life and you're added to the church while you're here on earth and you're safe and you're taught. And when you go out in battle, you know, when you go out in battle, you know you're by yourself, right? So that's one thing I understand. Every day you step out your house, you're in battle, Satan coming. It's one on one. But Jesus is with you. Not us. The preacher, he at work or something. Maybe telling somebody else about the Bible. The sister that gave me encouragement, she at work or telling somebody else about the Bible. You by yourself, and so are we all. But the Lord is with us all. They tell us, okay, now he's going to swing, duck, and then get him. You got him. Step back and wait till he move again. It's just like a coach all the time. And then when you get weak, when you fall, it's okay, say no, you can't hit him now because he's down. Move back, move back. Referee. Jesus is all that. He massages you down. The muscles are tied with words of comfort. Saying you're going to do it again tomorrow. I'm telling you. You're going to whoop him again even better tomorrow. He's everything you need. But you got to accept him as the only one that can save you. And then you got to follow his will. What does he say? He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be down. Mark 16, 16. Remember in Christ there's no yea and nay. Only yea and yea. So he will save those who obey and he will damn those who do not. Because there is no yea and nay. You believe that when Peter asked that question? They said, what shall we do? Verse 38 of Acts 2, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Not pray. I'm not saying about no prayer. For the promise unto you and to your children, all that are father, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, he didn't cut it short. Did he exhort them, encourage them, save yourself. From this untoward, this crooked, serpent-like generation. Then they glad to see his word baptized the same day. 3,000 souls added unto them. What they continue in? The Dalai Lama's writing? No. Mm -hmm. The Quran, right? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And the Apostle Doctrine. Mm, the fellowship, which is the walking in light, as Christ is in light. 1 John chapter 1. Breaking your bread to remember him until he returns. Should let none come between you and taking that meal with your brethren. Or two or more to remember what he did. And prayers. To cry unto him. In thanks and in petitions. Acts 2 5, 7. The Lord answered the church daily. Such should be saved. You believe that. And remember the eunuch is excited. But excitement don't save you. Sin and water don't save you. He says what did hinder me? Instruction. Philip says if you believe in all your heart. You may. Then he stops the chariot. 
Philip is trusting he'll believe it all that's up. But Philip has done all he can do. Take him to the water, he baptized him, and then they leave rejoicing, which sends us a signal he must have been right. Paul says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether Jew, Gentile, bond, or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Peter says it says, This has been a scripture that has blown my mind how a man can look at this and say, Baptism not say. 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the like figure went to even baptism specific. Does now also save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh. We know it's not the water, but the answer for good conscience. You respond. The word answer means to inquire. You've looked into it and you have done it. Responded properly. Without that, you cannot be saved. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it gets his power because he lives forever. So he says what we should do. Who is in heaven? God has shown he's at my right hand. When people say that's my right hand, man, they mean that's number one. Angels, authorities, and powers. Watch this. I love this part. You've got to catch the words of the Bible saying, have been made subject unto him. God made them all subject, including that demon of devil. Subject unto Jesus. If you believe that, our Savior gives you and me a message. Revelation 2.10. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. You have tribulation 10 days. Remember, he told this to the church. To the faithful church. To said, be thou faithful unto death. And you receive everlasting life. You believe that God will be with you. You get baptized now. We had two young men this morning. Pray for them that they'll come back and continue to search and reach. We're just about to get them. We pray that they will respond. But if you're here, you're listening, call the number. Hit the little triangle if you're around the world anywhere. You can't live too deep for us not to find somebody to love Jesus if you believe that. One thing you must remember though is this if you're here, you're a member of the church, you've gotten off track. You're in the same place you were before. Just come on back to the Lord. The Lord's not a finger pointer. He doesn't say, what are you doing here? He says, come on. He's telling you, come on, because you don't know where you're going to go. See, the Lord knows some of us are right on the edge of saying goodbye. And he's saying, come on, come on, hurry up. You got to come on back in before it's too late. Because trouble is coming. Satan would love for you to wait. What's his determining factor? God is good and he's great. The devil will tell you. But wait. God is good and he's great. But in 2019, just wait. Lay your hands suddenly on nothing and get behind me, Satan. Mm -mm. It's time to move quickly. What did Jesus say? Do it quickly. Make up your mind, do this, whose side you're on, and move. We, if we're on Christ's side, let's move. Whatever you need, come down together. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. Amen. Let us hate.